I'm Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com and this is... I'm BJ. And we are built... Simply BJ. Oh, Simply BJ. We are building a project today that would have cost $400 if you go to Home Goods to buy it. But with a little bit of tools and his engineering skills, we're going to piecemeal this thing together for about half the cost. So you ready? Let's jump into this project right now. Is that good That's for it. stuff? That's it. All right, so let's talk about step one of this project. This is what I think is the hardest part of a project is just getting started. Then we're going to cut the framing, do the miters. And I want to uh, glue it, throw a couple of kts in, in here. In a couple of what? Kts. <laughs> what? You know what kts is. You kts I was like, did he really just make the sound? Yes, he really did make that sound. Okay, now you'll see that we are using a table saw for part of this project, but I'm going to tell you, you can build this entire console table with just a jigsaw. And this is what we're building. This is the replica that we saw for $400 at home goods but we knew that we could piecemeal this together and then later create an actual design that we could help you build so i do want to point out that if you are brand new to building don't let the tools intimidate you this is something that i'm going to be teaching you in my upcoming course empower tools 101 and i'm going to show you how to use tools and build things but for this project let's go ahead and jump into the first part which is working on the top and the trim that you see here in green. Now we did build this upside down at certain points. So you're gonna see me flip this upside down and let's go ahead and work on this top part. Now this top part and the shelving is half inch thick. Now in the woodworking world, this is actually a little less thick than 0.5, but I just wanna make sure we're speaking the same language. We did cut this down to, I wanna say it was about 11 inches wide and 70 inches long. We also used some trim here that needed to be cut at a 45 degree miter cornered angle because we're going to be gluing this to all around the top so that we've got kind of a nice, even though this is going to be painted, we're going to have kind of like a nice 45 degree angle at the corners. Now we did glue this and we did do this on a flat surface because this is half inch plywood, but the trim you see is actually a little bit bigger. So we had it kind of inset, but the main thing is to number one clamp. And then number two, make sure that that top part of the console table is flush before using that 18 brad nailer in order to secure this together. Now this part is funny because I was responsible for cutting this and he was laughing at me because my measurement was off and I said, don't blame it on me. <laughs> so he recut the pieces for the ends and it was a perfect fit, but I still say it wasn't my fault. Now let's say that this piece was cut a little too long. Be sure to watch that video up in the corner where I show you how to get a really exact fit whenever you're using a miter saw. So that's a little tip to put in your pocket for the next time you're building. Okay, now that the top was done, it was time to do these supports. Now you'll see here in the plans, what you see in the pink, that's what we were cutting. This is just one by two select boards that we got from Home Depot. And while he measured, I cut and my measurements were a lot more accurate this time. You'll see that he's using an 18 gauge brad nailer in order to secure these supports. This was just to temporarily hold everything in place so that then we could go back with wood screws, one and a half inch, and make everything really secure. But when you're building something like this, sometimes it's helpful to just have that 18 gauge brad nailer just to hold everything in place before you can go back and connect everything. Now the next step was to attach what I'm calling the legs. That's what you see here in green. And you'll see that they are actually placed to the side of those supports that we just put in place. And you'll see that by putting that leg, which, well, I'm calling it a leg, to the side of that support gives us a nice surface upon which we'll be able to hold those arches. So I did some pilot holes, put some screws in, and we went around and did that for each of the supports, making sure that we were, well, we tried to be as 90 degree as we could. <laughs> Although there were parts where we were not quite as square as we should have been, but hey, we were piecemealing it together. So the next step was cutting the next shelf, which we did this exact same measurement, and we turned this upside down because this is what we needed to attach first before we put the shelf in. Do you see those little pink supports? That's what we needed to screw to the legs, but first we did two things. We used a brad nailer and we also used a piece of scrap wood to make sure that each of the supports were in the exact same location for each leg. And we went through, we did pilot holes, we secured them with screws, and then it was time to turn this back over and see if the shelf actually fit. And it did. 
we had to make a few adjustments, but we were ready to move on to the next part, which is making sure that this shelf was attached to those supports. And here's a tip, when you are attaching those supports to the legs, make sure that the side of the support is facing up. And the reason why this is important is because when you're attaching that shelf, you don't wanna screw into the end grain of the wood. We realized it a little too late. <laughs> we had to go back and kind of change that and make sure that we were screwing into the side. It just means you're gonna have a better connection. Now on the bottom of the legs, you'll see that we're adding more support. This is because that bottom shelf is going to be flush on the bottom of these supports. So you'll see that as we're putting this other piece, again, it's pretty much the same dimensions as the other shelf, that it just sits flush. And then we secured that with screws. And you'll see here that we're going into the side of that support and not into the end grain. At this point, we were able to flip it back over and you see that we've got both of our shelves in place. We have our supports, but we needed something on the bottom. So I'm flipping this back over and we're adding some one by four supports on both sides with a little bit of framing there in between. And I didn't capture a lot of this footage, but we did it the same way by just using the Brad nailer to hold everything in place. And then once everything was in place, we went back with some wood screws and made sure everything was secure. So you can get an idea from the SketchUp drawing that I just showed you what it looks like on the bottom, but this is great because it gives us additional height and it allows us to kind of have like a little bit of an overhang from the bottom framing. The next step was to attach the side supports. Now you'll notice here in our video that that shelf doesn't quite touch the board. That's our fault. We cut the shelf just a little too short. Remember, we're piecemealing this together, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's not going to be seen. We did use the Brad nailer to hold it in place and then later came back and screwed that in. But this is what the side arch is going to be attaching to. And I love when you've got raw edges of wood covered up with pieces of one by two. It just looks more attractive and finished. And so that's what we cut and then attached using, I believe we did glue this, but again, using the Brad nailer to temporarily hold it and then going back and screwing that in. But overall it looked pretty good and we were ready to move on to the arches. So we went back to Home Depot and got some quarter inch plywood. And now it was time to figure out how are we cutting these arches? <laughs> Now, because our console table wasn't quite square, we decided to cut a piece and hold it up and then mark where we were gonna need to cut. This is what the piece looked like. We were gonna have to do an arch that looked kind of like that. We wanted a one and a half inch at the top and we also wanted to cover up the sides. BJ wanted to use the table saw to cut the side pieces, but again, you could use a jigsaw for this. You do not have to use a table saw. Once we cut the piece to size, we marked one and a half inch at the top and then we figured out the length of, or I should say the width of the board. It was 11 inches, so we went five and a half inches down. And then we had to figure out how we were gonna do this arch. He had a great idea. Now you could use string, we didn't have any string, so we decided to use a paint stick and we put those markings on the paint stick, five and a half inches, and then used two pencils and just created that arc. And remember, making sure that that top part is one and a half inches because all of our arcs are going to have one and a half inch reveals at the top. Once we measured on the side, I believe we were keeping about maybe an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, I believe. We used a straight edge to figure out where we're gonna come up to, about there, and then we're gonna cut around. So this is where it was time to either use the table saw or use the jigsaw. <laughs> BJ didn't have the patience for using the jigsaw so I let him cut the sides using the table saw and then I came in with the jigsaw and finished off this arc part. And then he cut the other piece and it was so funny because when we pulled this out, he was so happy to see this piece cut so nicely. And we had done a pretty good job considering that we were piecemealing this together. With the console table upside down, we were able to see that this was actually a good fit. We added a little bit of wood glue, some brad nails, again, one and a half inch in length, and secured that to those side pieces. Now you'll see we have a little gap there. I'll show you in a moment how we actually fix that. Now the next part was to do the bigger pieces of quarter inch plywood that you see here in pink. Because we weren't quite square, the best thing was to hold it up there and kind of draw in place where we wanted to do the cuts. Now we're just kind of marking where these legs are knowing that we were gonna do probably about a quarter inch bigger 
and then figure out again using our little handy dandy paint stick <laughs> how to do the arcs so going in between those spaces we measured found the center point and then drew a line up to about one and a half inch now again we're using this paint stick in order to draw this arc is it an arc or an arch i keep saying that <laughs> i keep saying arch and arc but you know what i'm saying and then of course we wanted to go straight down using the straight edge to draw that line and remember we're going about a quarter inch wider than those legs and then it was time to pull out the jigsaw again and this is why i love the jigsaw because when you put a scroll blade in there you can easily cut out curves and other intricate things that you can't do on a table saw so again sign up with the link down below to hear more about my power tools course if you want to learn how to use a jigsaw and some of these other tools all right now this is the part i was telling you about there is a little bit of gap on the side here and when i came back to bj's house he had filled this in with some scrap wood some scrap one by twos now i don't think it's absolutely necessary but it does give you a little bit more rigidity and it gives you more surface area for you to attach the brad nails to all right moving on to the next part which is cutting out the front and back piece in the quarter inch plywood again i'm using a jigsaw with a scroll blade so that's what's allowing us to make these easy nice smooth cuts and bj he didn't have a lot of patience which is why he wanted to use the table saw to begin with but he wanted to try his hand at the jigsaw and he did a great job so once that was cut out we glued it and we then used our nailer to attach it now because we're going to be painting this black using our nailer and then filling everything in with wood filler wasn't really a big deal we did sand everything smooth and then especially after the wood filler had dried we sanded some more and then we filled in all the imperfections and all the gaps and things that we don't want people to see <laughs> but if you are actually going to be staining this be very careful with the wood filler that you're using because even though it says it's stainable it's really not that stainable <laughs> anyway this is what we were left with and it looked fantastic but at the last minute we realized wait a minute we probably need to put some pieces here on the bottom because we can't leave the raw edges and we actually want it to look uniform with the shelf that's above it so in his own time bj went and added some of these one by two boards and it looked fantastic and it just looked more finished and finally it was time to paint this we're using country chic paint with a built-in top coat and we didn't know is it going to be better with a paintbrush or with a quarter inch roller and after we did a little sample on the bottom yep the quarter inch roller it won so we both got to work adding two coats now i will tell you if you are using this paint and you are using this on raw wood like we are plan for at least a quart of paint <laughs> i mean it's crazy how much paint we use we didn't think it would suck it up like that but it did and it it actually gave you a nice flat black but it was a very chalky kind of finish even though it's got a top coat built into it and you can see that right now there's some shine there but we knew that we were going to do probably two coats of the top coat and i'll tell you i don't know if i really liked this top coat because the application was recommended to use it with a sponge and i just found it to be kind of streaky and you had to do like two or three coats in order to get a really like even coat so I like the paint, but I'd probably not use this finish for a top coat. Um, they do make a wax, and so that is an option. But you can see that it's got a nice shine to it, but just be prepared to do two, three, maybe four coats, depending on how much shine and protection you want. And we actually did like using the roller with the top coat. So when I was gone, BJ did do a couple more coats, and it looked fantastic. We are done with this project and I think it looks amazing. I think it looks pretty darn good. With I don't know if we actually saved a lot of money by building it ourselves <laughs> because the amount of time it took and all of that, I mean, you have to kind of figure that, but, but this looks amazing. Oh, I shouldn't say you could probably oh. could use a beat in there. Just use a beat. Um, <laughs> but if this piece were being sold, it would be more expensive than the one we were originally oh, yeah. making because oh, yeah. this is a much better quality. This build. is better. Yeah, this is better quality. So I think his wife is going to like this. So <laughs> he got bonus points for doing this. So we're going to let this dry. We've just added the top coat and then we're going to allow BJ to stage it and get his wife's approval and all of that good stuff. I think she'll like it. Let's hope so. Oh my gosh! I love it! This is beautiful! 
this is exactly what I wanted. All right, well, it looks like we're done. Thank you for your help, Serena. Much appreciated. Thank you, Serena. So, yeah, we're gonna go golfing now, so. Four. 